Our story is memory. Where were you on Sunday, July 6, 1975? Perhaps you were one of the 50,000 New York racing fans at beautiful Belmont Park. Or you could have been one of the 13 million attending by way of television. The willows would weep this day, but there was no hint of that in the mood of a joyful crowd anticipating a match race that had taken America by its heart. In the spirit of things, it did seem a day to dance. This was one of those rare sporting events that transcends the sports pages. It was the Super Bowl, the World Series, the heavyweight championship, all of them and more, for it had the added flavor of women's liberation versus male chauvinism, a horse race that was also a battle of the sexes. I think that Ruffian's going to win because she's the better horse. Well, I pick Foolish Pleasure just because he's a male. Ruffian because she's a female. Foolish Pleasure. I say Ruffian, and I think it's for women's liberation. I have to agree with my wife. I like Foolish Pleasure because I'm a male chauvinist pig. I believe Ruffian's going to win the race because every race she ever ran, she always left the opponent in the dust. Tension mounted for fans and principals alike. Leroy Jolly, brilliant young trainer of Foolish Pleasure. The owner of Foolish Pleasure, Mr. John Greer. Ruffian's owners, Mr. Stuart Janney and Mrs. Stuart Janney. The stars make their entrance. Foolish Pleasure, the nation's top three-year-old colt. Ruffian, far and away, the dominant three-year-old filly. Leroy Jolly prepares the brown colt, Foolish Pleasure. Frank Whiteley readies the black filly ruffian. Jockey Jacinto Vazquez gets up on ruffian. Braulio Baeza rides foolish pleasure. Two great race riders in a countdown to the drama that will determine which horse is faster this day. The intrigue and appeal of match racing is historic. In our time, memory pulses with recollections of Manowar versus Sir Barton, Zev against Papyrus. It calls back Seabiscuit War Admiral, Alsab, Whirlaway, Armed Assault, and Nashua Swaps. But none of them, that glittering lot, promised more than this moment. Ruffian, the Black Beauty, winner of all ten career starts. Foolish Pleasure, winner of 11 of 14 races, including a Kentucky Derby that at the time established him as the best three-year-old. The building drama made the moment electric. Ruffian, racing's brightest star since Secretariat, had captured the imagination and hearts of fans from coast to coast. The ultimate answer to the girl-boy confrontation would be but two minutes away at the finish line. We were expecting such a simple answer. It is now post time. Uh, I saw her first in October of 73 as a yearling at uh, Claiborne Farm. And she was a grand-looking filly. Couldn't help him like her. Couldn't tell what she could run in there yet. Ruffian, we now know, was something special. Trainer Frank Whiteley is patient and hard-working, one of the world's great trainers. Guiding Ruffian for her entire career, he was the man most responsible for her development. She acted like she had a lot of ability. I think her first race would be uh, in late May of 74. She's a great responsibility, but nice to be around. Pleasure to be around. You know, she's the best filly I ever had, and there's no question about that. What had Ruffian done that made this match race seem as ordained as the stars in their courses? In 1974, she won all five starts by an average of nine lengths. 
Frank Whiteley set one immediate goal for 1975, a sweep of the Triple Crown for Phillies, something only three horses had ever done. The first step was the Acorn Stakes at Aqueduct on May 10th. Track announcer Dave Johnson. It is now post time. Noble Sita going for the lead. It's Survivor Sorrow ranging up and Ruffian along the inside now moving and taking the lead. That's Ruffian in front by a head. With Piece of Luck second on the outside by two lengths. Noble Sita is third by three parts of a length. Gallant Trial is fourth on the rail by a head. Then Survivor Sorrow on the outside. Something regal along the rail and point in time is seventh. Continuing down the back stretch, Ruffian along the rail leads by half a length. Piece of luck on the outside is second by five. Along the rail, Sir Iversaro something regal moves up. Then on the outside, Noble Cedar. They pass the half mile pole. Ruffian in command now by a length and a quarter. Piece of luck is second on the outside by three and something regal races third. First quarter in 23 and two and 45 and three for the half. Pass the three eight pole, Ruffian in front by a length. Piece of Luck is now second by three. Something Regal racing away from the rail is third by a head. Point in time is fourth on the rail. Survivor Sorrow and Noble Cedar, they're in the stretch and Ruffian is in command by four. Piece of Luck racing second to length and a quarter on the outside of Something Regal. Coming past the eighth pole with Ruffian in front by seven lengths. Something Regal on the outside, second point in time. The other's now far back and Ruffian goes away the lead by nine. Had it been a fight, it would have been stopped. Ruffian was that awesome. Mike Bell, the assistant who executes many of Frank Whiteley's decisions, recalls joining the Ruffian family early in 1974. Well, I came to work uh, for Mr. Whiteley uh, a week, uh, approximately a week before she uh, first ran, and uh, I always thought that. Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't know her name till like the day she she ran, or the day before when she was in the overnight. I don't think too many people did. <laughs> it's a joke now, but uh, it looked like. Uh, of course, she only won by 15, and, and uh, equal to track record. I thought she was too heavy. She just had a queenly air about her that uh, anybody would have to admire. You could walk down the shed, and nobody tell you who Ruffin was. I mean, just. Anybody off the street that didn't know horses, they would know who Ruffian was, the way the way she carried herself. She, highly intelligent. Uh, she was real business-like, you know, and uh, I think she kind of wanted to go out there and, and do her thing and, and get it over with and then relax and come on back home. I think I'm awful lucky just to, to have been around her. All the Locust Hill Farm family rejoiced in Ruffian, but perhaps no one man more personified that combination of day-to-day -day duties and emotional bond than groomed Dan Williams, her constant companion. He accompanied her in Aqueduct's paddock on May 31st, 1975, for the Mother Goose Stakes. At a mile and an eighth, the Mother Goose is the second hurdle in the Phillies' Triple Crown. Ruffian's fans, extremely confident, sent her to the post at one to 10 odds for the second straight time. She entered the starting gate virtually on her own, a sensible lady going about her business. And it is now post time. And they're off. Number seven, Dan's commander, unseated the rider at the start. Ruffian on the outside, quickly taking command. With sun and snow between horses along the inside, Sir Ivor Sorrow is third. With her matchless bounty of raw speed, Ruffian raced to the lead. Unlike many of the great speed horses of the past, she was not one to squander her gift impetuously. Ruffian's generosity in allowing the rider absolute control of her speed added a compelling dimension to her talents. After rounding the first turn, with Survivor Sorrow on the rail and Sun and Snow making authentic challenges, Vasquez let out just a subtle notch and Ruffian drew off again. 
They continue down the back stretch, and Ruffian has the lead by a length and a quarter. Sir Ivers Sorrow, second three parts of a length. Sun and Snow on the outside is third. Late in the back stretch, her rivals forced another move, but Ruffian's rider let out yet another notch as they headed into the final turn. The half mile time was 47 and three fifth seconds. And around the far turn, now Ruffian draws away to lead by two, as Sun and the Snow on the outside is second by a head. Along the rail, Sir Ivor Sorrow drops back third. Gallant trial on the outside is fourth. Then Sweet Old Girl and Point. Coming to the quarter pole and into the home stretch, Vasquez finally allowed Ruffian to run on her own. She knew what to do. Ruffian in front by two and a quarter length. Sun and Snow second by a length. Gallant trial on the outside is third. Ruffian in front now by five lengths. As usual, Ruffian never felt the sting of a rider's whip. Vasquez was in command as the great filly, under a mild hand ride, pulled away fluidly, cruising in high gear. Ruffian in front. He's come to the wire. The winner by 15 lengths. And Ruffian with Vasquez. He's the best kid the boy. Sweet old girl finishes second. Sun and Snow gets the show spot. A mile and an eighth in 147 and four fifths. Another stakes record for the filly and her owner. What Ruffian was defies definition. How do you measure that courage, that elegance? How do you charge sheer excellence? It's beyond mere words and figures, beyond science. Dr. Manuel Gilman, highly respected head veterinarian of the New York Racing Association, recalled her first performances. Quite a few clock as we're talking about it. She worked very fast, she worked very smooth, but nobody pays too much attention to a horse before they run. After she ran twice, then we realized, I certainly realized it and everybody else did, that she was something extraordinary. As far as the physical makeup of Ruffian is concerned, she was a very big filly. She was much larger than the average filly. As a matter of fact, she was larger than the average uh, colt. I weighed her a couple of weeks before the race, and she weighed 1,125 pounds. Foolish pleasure if it weighed uh, 1,061 at the same time. And he was a colt, the same age. She was a very large filly. She never looked large uh, unless you stepped into her for the simple reason that she was very well proportioned. And she was a very strong, healthy filly, had a very long stride. She never looked like she was going as fast as she was. But this particular filly, I'll always remember her as uh, possibly the best filly that's been around in many and many a generation. But still the skeptics asked, can she carry her speed over a distance of ground? The final jewel in the filly's triple crown would answer that question. The coaching club American Oaks is a test of endurance at a mile and a half, a distance identical to the Belmont Stakes run by Colts two weeks earlier. Imparting human qualities to an animal may be a fallacy, but still, still to her public, she was a queen. Yet it wasn't all sentiment. The odds board can't display beyond one to nine, but the knowing better sent Ruffian off at one to 20. Once again, Dave Johnson. And they're on. Sun and Snow from between horses. There goes Ruffian. Now Ruffian out to take the lead. Sun and Snow second. Gallant trial is third. Let me linger on the outside. Fourth equal change is fifth. Along the inside, sweet old girl. They go to the clubhouse turn, and Ruffian has the lead by two lengths. That's Let Me Linger, second by one. An equal change on the outside is racing third. Gallant Trial skims the rail for it. Sun and Snow moves up fifth on the outside. Then a gap length and a half. A sweet Old Girl is next, and Funny Cat is seventh. As they move to the back stretch, Ruffian now draws away the lead by six lengths. Let Me Linger is second by half a length. Equal change races third by four. Gallant Trial is fifth at this point by a head. Sun and Snow on the outside is next. And a Sweet Old Girl and Funny Cat. The half is in 49 seconds. Down the back stretch, Ruffian in front now by four and a half lengths. Let Me Linger is second by a length and a half. An equal change races third by five. 
Sun and Snow is fourth by ahead on the inside, Gallant File, racing fifth by one. Then Sweet Old Girl, Bunny Cat on the outside, is seventh, past the three-quarter pole. It's Ruffian in front by four lengths. Let Me Linger, second by three parts of length, an equal change on the outside. Now a closer third as they go to the far turn. Ruffian has the lead by a length and a quarter. Let Me Linger is second. There goes equal change up on the outside. Now equal change is second. Let Me Linger back to third. A gap of seven lengths to Gallant Trial, fourth. Sun and Snow is fifth. Funny Cat and Sweet Old Girl, they're on the far turn. Ruffian has the lead by a length and three quarters. Equal change is second, three parts of a length. On the inside, let Me Linger is right there third, then a gap of six to Gallant Trial, three-eighths of a mile to the finish. It's Ruffian in front by a length and a quarter. Equal change on the outside is second by one. And Let Me Linger is racing third as they come to the top of the stretch. Ruffian has the lead by a length and a half. And equal change is now second. Let Me Linger drops back. Gallant Trial swings to the outside and down the stretch they come. Equal change is second by the same margin and Gallant Trial races third. As they come to the final 16th, it's Ruffian in front by two. Equal change is second, it's Ruffian in front. Cover touched by the whip. Ruffian under the wire, the winner by two and a quarter length. With equal change, second by six. And let me linger in for the show spot. Ruffian, undefeated at 10 start, wins the Coaching Club American Oaks. The Phillies' triple crown was won. Any doubts concerning Ruffian's distance abilities were dispelled in the stretch. The time of 2.27 and 4 fifths not only equaled the stakes record, but was two fifths of a second faster than the winning time for the 1975 Belmont Stakes. It seems unthinkable that this was Ruffian's final parade through victory lane. Selfishly, we thought we would have her forever. It was more than 10 straight victories that won the allegiance of Jacino Vazquez, one of America's leading riders, Vasquez was perhaps the best witness to her power. As a regular rider of both Foolish Pleasure and Ruffian, he gave his heart to the filly and chose to ride her in the match race. She's a lot different than most of the horses because she break out of the gate running and she finished running all the time. I probably was the, one of the fortunate riders all my career. I rode one of the best horses in the country. Rafia never got beat. When she broke her leg, she was in front. How life taunts us. The filly that may have been the greatest in history would go eye to eye and heart to heart with the winner of the Kentucky Derby. We thought that was all there was to it, and it would have been enough. But, a scant three and a half furlongs down the backstretch, tragedy would become an added starter in the great match race. It is now post time. Four. Foolish pleasure on the outside goes for the lead. Ruffian along the inside up the challenge. Ruffian on the inside, now gets to the front by ahead. Foolish pleasure on the outside is right there. She's in front by ahead. He's on the outside. Now there's stride for stride. Down the back stretch, past the first quarter. Ruffian has the lead by ahead. On the outside, Foolish pleasure staying right with her. They continue down the back stretch. It's Ruffian on the rail in front by ahead. Foolish pleasure is on the outside and challenging. Now she's in front by half a length with Polish Pleasure on the outside second. The first quarter in 22 and one fifth seconds. Ruffian has broken down. Ruffian is stopped. Polish Pleasure continuing. The flame of Ruffian's fierce, robust spirit had burned for the final time. Black daughter of reviewer out of the mayor shenanigans, 
drew her last competitive breath where she had been all her racing life. On the lead.